Um, celebration of Milita Dia de Tai is at the core of Hellenic culture since Homer. The tomb of Sema is seen as a giver of asbest on Cleos, uh, and you have all the references on top of your first page. But it is also understood that a monumental grave alone is not enough for the memory of the heroic deeds to survive without the help of poetry, which is the only way not only to perpetuate Cleos through time, but also to spread it across space, an ability that monuments do not possess as aptly reminded to his customers by Pinda in the well-known opening of Nemean V. Promises of promotion to an heroic status through poetry are updated in the Hellenistic period with the develop development of book culture, so that not only memorized poetry can get on board ships and travel throughout the Greek-speaking world, but also papyrus roll. Hellenistic kings and their philoi did not have shortage of personal homers to transfigure their deeds into an heroic fantasy. Ambition for fame after death, however, has never been their exclusive prerogative. Simple soldiers or middle class officers could not hope for an epic poet of, a poem, of course, but at the most for an individual short epitaph commissioned by their family or fellows, uh, brothers in arms. The very existence of an individual tombstone for a soldier is a hint about his social status. Um, actually, in antiquity, most of the foot soldiers, and not just them, were buried where they fell, in mass graves. Uh, Polyandre, of course, were provided with epitaphs commissioned at public ex expenses for ideological reasons we are not dealing with now. In the modern world, the standard epitaph for a soldier in war cemeteries, which privilege uniformity over individuality, is recording just a few basic anagraphical data. Likewise, in antiquity, the vast majority of epitaphs of the same kind consisted of just a few and not necessarily metrical words with the same basic data. The typology of the inscription, inscriptional epitaph for individual military men becomes more varied from the 3rd century BC onward, and we shall see it later, even though its main purpose remained the same, as perfect, perfectly stated by Anite in a passage of a famous epigram I put on the top of the first page of your handout. In spite of Anita's wish, however, the epitaph for individual soldiers has never been very popular with the compilers of anthologies, nor it spawned a purely literary subgenre, so that Cleos sung by the epitaph apparently did not fare so well in literary books as probably expected by its commissioners and authors also. Ideally, epitaphs celebrating deaths and lives spent in battle are expected to show more frequent references to Homer and to other champions of martial poetry, like Tertius, Simonides, than epitaphs for other professional categories. Um, I put some example or references uh, in your handout at, under number two. We have no time to deal with them now because they are also thousands and not just this. I just want to point out a, a very curious case is uh, uh, point 2A in your handout, um, which shows that Homeric reminiscences are active in this kind of epi epigrams so sometimes, not just when concepts related to the heroic ethos are presented, but also in cases where the epitaph focuses more on the grief of the family. In this case, the corpse of a soldier has been retrieved from abroad and buried uh, by the family, but his uh, fellow soldiers are left as a meal for the birds. And of course, you have all the Homeric references stated here. Uh, the Homeric presence in inscriptional epitaphs for soldiers also may consist in the comparison between soldiers and Homeric heroes. Uh, this feature becomes more and more frequent, uh, especially in correspondence with the uh, period of the second sophistic. Uh, as you may recall, in Philostratus Cedricon's divine dress, at, at a certain point, recalled, uh, recalls the phenomenon of the ghosts of the Homeric heroes, especially Ajax and uh, Hector, featuring prominently in these epitaphs, by the way, uh, still haunting the plain of Troy. And the same memories still lingering on the Dardanelles a few centuries later will inspire young soldiers with a background in classics fighting at Gallipoli, as well uh, as shown Catherine Van Diver in her last book, Standing in the Trench Achilles. Uh, the example also in this case are uh, um, hundreds. Um, I put some cases in your handout under the number three, at pages uh, two and three. But again, I want just to draw your attention to one of them, which is the last one at page three, uh, three on your um, left, the one for Sotericus. 
is one of the rare anonymous uh, epi epitaphs for soldiers who ended up in the Palatine anthology. Uh, and uh, um, actually, it is located in a section of the seventh book, uh, a bit uh, difficult to uh, understand because it's uh, uh, placed between a Simonidian epitaph, uh, the, the one for Megistias, uh, the very famous one, and a very late epitaph, not for a soldier, by uh, Sophronius. So we are on the sixth AD, basically. Uh, we don't know also how this uh, uh, epigraphic epitaph, because I think it's epigraphic, uh, I, I will uh, tell you uh, more about in a minute, uh, ended up uh, collected in a uh, the Greek anthology. Uh, it is most probably epigraphic because it shows uh, many uh, features in common with uh, a lot of epitaphs we have from the uh, Roman East, uh, Syria, Palestine. Uh, it has many uh, features like, uh, for example, the remark of, uh, uh, by the soldier of having completed militia. Uh, the pride of having uh, uh, given wealth to his family, thank, uh, thanks for uh, th thanks, uh, his uh, um, uh, uh, engaging job, uh, all bonemon camaton in this case. And also there is the comparison with a nomadic hero, which here is uh, uh, Nestor, and probably the reason uh, in this epi epitaph has been picked up, even though it's not particularly interesting from the literary point of view, is the fact that it has a gnomic value, and there is a rare quotation of Nestor, who also has um, a specific um, fictitious epitaph dedicated to him in the Greek anthology 7144. Uh, uh, this example shows that from the mere content and from the literary quality, it is still difficult to distinguish between literary epitaph and inscribed epitaph. Uh, and of course, there is no reason to think that in the Hellenistic period, the so-called literary epigrammatist, we all know, uh, did not accept also commissions for, for inscriptions like, of course, Simonides did. Uh, it has been noticed in recent works that, um, of course, the two species tend to diverge over time. That is, the literary epigram uh, is uh, all, always about two uh, couplets long, while the inscriptional one tend to become longer. And uh, basically, it becomes like a, a small elegy, of, uh, including some uh, biographical narrative. Um, of the type I used to call the diptych. Uh, you have some example, again, we have many of them um, uh, under number five in your handout. Uh, basically, what you have is uh, a long elegy describing the uh, basic data of the life of this uh, veteran. Uh, they are generally a uh, veteran from the Roman army. Uh, the first part is dealing with the uh, military career, and the second part with the uh, uh, wealth acquired and spent during a period of peace with the family. Uh, generally, this wealth is embodied in a monumental tomb, and uh, keep in mind this detail because at the end of the paper we will uh, come back to this. Uh, who are the authors of this kind of epitaphs? Uh, it has been suggested that in this particular kind of epitaph, the long elegy for the veterans, sometimes uh, the person, the deceased himself, of course, because before death, may have been uh, the author of the poem, uh, for example, this has, um, has been said in the case of Priscus, uh, who is a famous uh, Achilles turned into a Laertes, as we shall see, uh, is uh, um, in his epitaph, he is uh, um, he's presenting himself first as an uh, accomplished warrior and then as an accomplished uh, farmer, uh, quoting also Hesiod. Uh, we know some other cases of uh, this kind of cultivated soldiers, amateur uh, poets, uh, who sometimes sign their epitaphs. Uh, of course, uh, we have the tradition of the poet soldier since Achilles. Uh, in the uh, literature, we have Achilochus, Fragment 1 West. But unfortunately, um, we have to say that uh, we could apply to many well-educated military men the ironic line of Umberto Saba, fui cattivo poeta e buon soldato. Uh, what is certain uh, is that for another kind of uh, soldier deceased, uh, in particular the uh, youth deceased in their prime, after, just after school, after leaving the gymnasium, the epitaphs are particularly rich in uh, literary uh, references, and uh, um, 
uh, is a um, way of showing the social status of the deceased, of course, to mention the education and the literary elements uh, that built this education, even before the uh, praise of their martial virtues. Um, again, you have uh, a lot of examples, uh, really mm, dozens of examples. Uh, under the number five in your handout, you find uh, some of them. Um, sorry, under the number four. In particular, one that uh, uh, struck me is uh, the uh, epitaph, which has been recently published by uh, Caniotis, uh, about uh, uh, a young man from Aphrodisias, um, who uh, is um, uh, presented as a, um, a young man who used the barbita, not even the barbiton, the barbita is, a, is a even a rare way to, to uh, name the instrument, and who was reading Homer uh, even before uh, using the tools of uh, uh, the athletic uh, um, uh, education and uh, the, his weapons. Uh, in some cases, the status of the soldiers is... Um, uh, ideally, uh, demonstrated by the signature of a professional poet who uh, has been hired by the family to write uh, explicitly for uh, the epitaph of the soldier himself and of his family. This is the case of the famous Herodes of Asaya, a professional poet who signed a series of epitaphs for the very wealthy family of Ptolemaios, a Greek-Egyptian philos, a sungenes of the king, who uh, evidently, um, it has been stated, is the last to die in a family, so probably he is the one who commissioned all this series. Unfortunately, from the literary point of view, these epitaphs are not particularly uh, uh, so good, even though they are very long, they certainly stand out in the cemetery. Uh, so, uh, my question is, um, uh, uh, we can find a Hellenistic Simonides, we can find a... Um, can we find a, 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 uh, an epigrammatist who is known for literary uh, epigrams, but also for taking commissions? Uh, if we take a look to the seventh book of the Greek anthology, we find a, a, a number of fictitious epitaphs, also of uh, uh, military content, for example, for the Homeric heroes or for famous uh, people like uh, Themistocles, for example. But uh, if we uh, uh, focus, of course, I'm leaving aside Simonides from this uh, paper. I'm not talking about Simonides or the Simonidian corpus. If we focus on the uh, um, topic, uh, um, individual epitaph for soldiers, who can be also inscriptional, who have the structure of an inscriptional epitaph, we find that there are only a dozen. Uh, which is uh, surprising because actually in real life, uh, this kind of epitaphs are very numerous. They are probably one of the most common type of uh, epigram known. Um, I listed all the um, potentially epigraphic uh, um, uh, poems for individual soldiers uh, uh, from the Greek anthology in, at page five of your handout. Um, some of them, of course, can be fictitious. We cannot assess uh, about every one of them that uh, it has been commissioned. Uh, I just noticed that uh, if we just can hypothesize about some of the famous epigrammatists, we can say that probably Damagetus is a good candidate for being a, 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 a poet who uh, could write uh, literary epigrams and also uh, taking commission for scriptural epitaphs. Uh, in fact, most of his uh, work is uh, known to be uh, mm, uh, ardently philo-spartan. Uh, but, uh, for example, the epitaph uh, 438 uh, celebrates an Achaean, a member of the Achaean League, uh, who at the time, at the end, we are at the end of the third century, was siding with um, against the Italian League, uh, supported by Sparta. So uh, in this case, the Magitus is not taking sides; he's taking commissions because he can write for both sides. And also, Friedlander, analyzing a lot of inscriptional epitaphs of the same period, attributed to uh, the same the Magitus. Of course, we cannot um, uh, prove. Uh, this, uh, this hypothesis, for stylistic reasons may, mainly. Uh, another uh, couple of epitaphs, mm, the one for Sopolis, which is in uh, page five of your handout, and the one once attributed to Posidippus is on page uh, one, the one for Timocritus. 
and both of them are for Acarnanians. So, so again, we are not in this, on the Spartan side, but on the opposite side. Another candidate, of course, could be Positipus, but um, neither the Greek anthology nor the Milan Papyrus preserve any trace of epitaphs for military men. Uh, actually, the Milan Papyrus is uh, 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 full of epithymbian for women, not for men, for military men. The only four attributed to him are under Dubia and only recorded in Fernandez Galliano edition. So we cannot prove that they are uh, authentic by Positipus. Um, actually, uh, whoever was the author of these epitaphs, uh, of course, uh, uh, was a professional poet. And uh, uh, most of these kind of epitaphs are written not by famous names, but by local professionals. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, assess from the mere style uh, who can be the author, uh, because all these professionals were imbued by Homer and all the classics we know. So um, they have not very distinctive features. Uh, another source for uh, professional poets could be, of course, uh, uh, from the Hellenistic period onwards, literary uh, anthologies, even though, uh, as we have seen, the uh, literary examples are not so many, the Simonidian corpus, and also some of the um, collection of epigraphical poems, like the one by Philocorus and similar ones uh, built through time. Uh, recently, has been, uh, it has been suggested, uh, actually it, it is an old suggestion, but it has been repeated recently, that this uh, professional could use some um, so-called copy books or sample books, pattern books, in order to build their own um, uh, epitaphs upon commission. Uh, I am a bit skeptical about this, the existence and the nature of these copy books uh, could uh, uh, list only uh, formulae or single single verses. Uh, I am more. Uh, I, I think that uh, it is what is most probable here is that this uh, technita, this uh, professional, either wandering or local, uh, linked to the uh, bottega to the workshops, um, were using private anthology uh, anthologies of the kind we know for also not professional poets like the Serapium anthology who is containing also a couple of epigrams by Posidippus. Um, these anthologies could uh, list uh, both literary examples, uh, literary uh, uh, models, and inscriptional one. And they could, uh, the anthology could have grown through time, uh, going from the master to the pupils. Um, Unfortunately, uh, these anthologies uh, did not survive uh, as many private anthologies we have. I want to close with another uh, peculiar example of an uh, inscriptional epitaph uh, who ended up, which ended up in the um, um, Greek anthology. If we have time later, I want to uh, talk about the Minas uh, epigram who can support actually my um, uh, my idea. Uh, I follow the interpretation by Fantuzzi uh, about this couple of epigrams, so probably uh, who was writing them upon commission um, is uh, taking inspiration from the layout of a, uh, uh, of a book anthology, of course, of an anthology circulating on papyrus. Um, so, uh, just to conclude, I want to point out another uh, peculiar case of inscriptional epitaph for single uh, individual soldier, uh, which ended up in the Greek anthology. Uh, we are at the page uh, seven um, of um, your handout. Um, uh, sorry, uh, the page six of your handout is the number uh, seven. Is the epitaph um, of the Palatine anthology, book seven, two to eight. Uh, this belong to um, very uh, well-known uh, type of epitaph, the one for the um, tower tomb or dove coat tower tomb. Uh, what happens is that uh, is this: um, many of the veterans from uh, the uh, Roman army uh, and coming from the uh, Hellenized East, um, when they come back to their family, they use the uh, money, uh, the olbos <laughs> that came from the militia. To build, a to build a family tomb. 
uh, linked with a dove coat. So it's a form of poetic justice that money gained with a military career should end up in doves, but uh, this is what happens uh, dozens of times. Uh, this uh, adespoton, uh, as you see, has many features in, in, in content and also in, in the use of formulae, many features in common with other inscriptional epigrams we know from the, the same area. Uh, we are again uh, in Syria and Palestine. Uh, so, um, uh, this uh, particular epigram has been uh, uh, placed in the uh, Greek anthology in a section uh, containing mainly uh, Meleagrian uh, poems. Uh, the, f the previous one is Diotimus uh, 227 uh, for a soldier, and the following one is Dioscorides uh, 229 for another soldier, but this one is fictional. So um, it could be that this uh, not particularly good and very average, very banal uh, inscriptional epitaph for an anonymous, uh, a very um, uh, common person named Androzion, is not a famous man, um, has been recorded in uh, one of the anthologies I was talking about previously that is uh, containing both literary epigrams and uh, inscriptional one, arranged thematically, of course. So um, just to conclude, I uh, just want to point out that in spite of the wish of Anite and uh, the wish that is repeated time and again in uh, Epitaph for Soldiers, that is that the Cleos could be sung forever and transmitted obviously also in books. Uh, the only, ironically, the only two uh, epigrams anonymous who ended up along with the famous names and the famous epigrams for, from Damagitus, Anite, Leonidas and other well-known uh, Hellenistic poets are two very banal and very average inscriptional epitaphs from probably the late Roman Empire. So uh, I leave this question mark with you because I still don't understand why this happened. Uh, and I find also ironic and a pity that many high quality epitaph for individual soldiers uh, we know through, of course, uh, uh, just epigraphical uh, um, support uh, did not end up as they deserved in a literary uh, anthology. Thank you.